Welcome to the podcast. We're street smart, business smart, all kinds of smart people share their insights into the world of marketing, career journeys, and personal growth. So sit back and prepare to get enlightened with your host, Adam Posner. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast where I bring you the best and brightest from the world of business, marketing, and personal growth to help you harness your inner tenacity and drive your career forward. So my guest today, Sarah Johnson, is a former corporate recruiter and industry insider who got tired of seeing talented high achievers get passed over for opportunities just because they didn't have the right marketing documents and they didn't know how to position themselves in interviews. So she launched the Briefcase Coach in 2017 and had the privilege of partnering with job seekers all over the world. She's been featured in Inc., HuffPost, Reader's Digest, and more, and was named one of the top job search coaches to follow in 2019 by JobScan. So quick backstory about how we know each other. Um, so we were connected through Evangelina LeClaire's SOS Summit for Job Seekers. You know, there was about 20 or so key influencers in that career talent search space that came together for a virtual summit. It was pretty cool. We did that about a month ago. And I saw Sarah's content. Um, it was awesome. I was inspired. So I do what I do best. I reached out. We connected. And, you know, as the rest they say, you know, is, is history. And, you know, I was really inspired by her passion for the way she was really helping people in their career journey. And again, you know, I preach this to everybody, and I'm sure Sarah does too. Take your online, offline, connect with people. Sarah and I were like-minded in our missions, and I'm thrilled to have her here today. Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I've been really excited about this. Awesome. Likewise. So why don't we jump right in and why don't you give my tribe a little bit on your backstory. Tell us a little bit about who you are and how we got to where we are today. Well, you did a great job introducing me, but just to add to that, I was corporate, I was corporate recruiter. I've worked for several different companies from healthcare to financial services to large private and love recruiting, but I just realized that my passion was helping candidates get from point A to point B. And I think networking, as, as much as we talk about it, and maybe you've seen this from your job as well, uh, we talk about it a lot, but people don't know how to do it, or they're really intimidated by it, and they just need somebody to help them figure out who to connect with, who the right decision makers are, and what you should, what kind of messaging you should have. So that's been my niche and something that I've, I've loved doing over the last couple of years. Absolutely, and I, and I love it. So we're going to get super tactical today, if you don't mind, because, you know, I bring guests on the show that are high level to talk about cultural transformation, and they're talking about strategy. So let's get super tactical here, and let's kind of flip it in the beginning here. Let's talk about job description. So from my vantage point, and I operate as an internal and external recruiter, I work inside of companies, and I also work as a recruiter, you know, contingency recruiter. There's nothing worse than a poorly written misaligned job description. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the company. It doesn't help the candidates. It's not efficient. So let's talk about the importance from your perspective of a great job description from the job seeker perspective. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, well, the thing that I hear recruiters like you say in corporations is that you want to hire a more diverse workforce, right? You want to make sure that you are attracting great candidates who have diverse ideas and who um, can, who, who can uh, influence your culture. Well, the problem is, is if you have a very specific job description um, that has, you know, you're, you're basically asking for a purple unicorn, Female candidates are, are not going to apply. There's a 2014 Harvard Business Review article that says men apply for about 60% of jo jobs that they're about 60% qualified for, whereas women want to be 100% qualified for a job before they apply for Interesting. it. Interesting. I know. I know. And so I've seen that in my clients. Um, they, women say that they were just want to follow the guidelines of the job description. So they don't want to apply for something and waste the recruiter's time. So when you have a, a really niche job description, you're, you're limiting your, your potential workforce or your applicant pool. Yeah, that's, that's, fanta that's fantastic. So how could job seekers stand out when applying for jobs? And I mean, how could they get on the radar of internal recruiters like myself? Yeah, so I'm all about going around the applicant tracking system, which is probably not what you want to hear me say. No, absolutely. That's what I preach as well. And we'll get to that. I, I, I want, I'm, I'm guessing that what you're about to say is going to align with my thoughts. Oh, cool. 
cool. Well, yeah, I want to hear. But I, I think that applicant tracking systems can just be real barriers for getting motivated candidates through to the, the companies. They're great in terms of they help companies stay organized. They let people know about opportunities and positions. Um, if you think about recruiting before an applicant tracking system, and, and my career in recruiting started before we had, you know, what we have, the systems that we have in place now. We used to have a big filing cabinet. So it's definitely an improvement from a filing cabinet of resumes, but recruiters, sometimes there's a disconnect between what the hiring manager wants and what the recruiter thinks the hiring manager wants. So getting past that applicant tracking system and talking to the decision makers can really make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And there was one key word that you hit there, which I want to reiterate is motivated. There's a yeah. difference between a passive candidate who's just spraying and praying and applying to everything that they're not qualified for and diluting that ATS and putting more of a strain on the internal recruiters. where We're not able to give attention to those motivated candidates. And I always preach, if you're a motivated candidate and you see a job and you apply to it, take the extra step, go on LinkedIn, find out who the HR people are and connect with them directly and be mindful of your message. Be mindful mm -hmm. of your approach that you're being persistent. My three P's polite, persistent, and patient. And you go mm -hmm. about those three, you position it the right way and you get on the radar that way when they finally get to your applicant, you know, your application, you know, it stands up like, Oh, I remember Sarah. She reached out to me or they're like, you know what? Sarah looks good. I looked at her on LinkedIn. She's spot on. She's motivated. I'm going to call her and not go, you know, to that, to that ATS system. So, you know, kind of a follow-up on that one. So after, the, after a candidate applies to a job, what is the next step that they should take to follow up? The follow-up after they've applied, I think they should absolutely reach out to someone within the company if they have a connection. Uh, internal referrals are, are gold. I think I read that uh, companies who are referred by an internal referral are more likely to get the job and stay in the position. And there's a, there's an, um, a bonus often tied to an internal referral for the employee's sake. So I say try to find a tie to the company. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, internal referrals are incredible. When you have that credibility of someone who could vouch you from the inside, they know A, that you would, you know, be a good, I'm not saying cultural fit, because I don't like that expression, but meaning you would, you as a person would do well in that company, you would excel, you have the same values, you align to them. Plus, and I'm saying this, you know, cautiously that they know that they know the job that they're referring you to from a skill set perspective that you have those qualifications. And it's their, their ass on the line too. I'm not going to refer somebody to my company if I don't think they're a good fit. That's, a, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's an absolute um, you know, bad luck. So another piece that we talk about a lot and that you, that you preach on is, is how to stand out. And we're not talking about the job application process. We're talking about personal, professional branding, which are really blending together now, specifically on platforms such as LinkedIn. So how could, how could writing content establish yourself as a thought leader in your industry? And, you know, the second part is that, you know, how could you use that to, to stand out? As a job seeker? If you've never done that before, you say, listen, I, me, Adam, I'm an expert in, in recruiting. You know, I have a lot to say about it and I want to put my thoughts out there. How do I go about doing that? Yeah. So I think content is powerful because it lets your audience, it, it shows your audience your expertise and what you bring to the table. So it's one thing to say, oh, I'm really good at recruiting, but when you demonstrate that you are and people read the, the stuff that you put out, they start believing it and they can see you in that role. Um, another great thing about writing content, and I've, I've been seeing this for myself, I put a, um, I challenged myself two years ago to write content for LinkedIn every business day of the week. And I started doing that two years ago and have pretty much consistently followed that today. But I found that when I'm writing content, I have to be reading. And I have to be staying vigilant on, on topics that are important to my industry. And so I'm reading quality journal pieces. I'm reading Wall Street Journal. I'm reading um, Harvard Business Review. I'm reading recruiting brain food and all, all the recruiting journals just to stay on top of the latest news. And the, the, the value of reading is that I am, I don't know if you've ever heard the stat, but if you um, read one hour a day for seven years, that's a hundred or 1,820 hours of reading that you've done in a seven year period. If you just do it business days, that's more than a PhD and a postdoc combined. That's so, insane. Yeah, that's how you become an expert in your field. So content producing really pushes you to know your stuff. You got to stay on top. And if you're going to be an industry expert, you have to know, you have to know what you're talking about. So let's switch a little bit and talk about, you know, you talk a lot about, and I've seen your content going back to your, your post is behavioral based interviews. So first and foremost, could you explain to everybody who may not know what, what is a behavioral based interview? 
Behavioral-based interview is a question set that usually starts with, so tell me about a time you did such and such. And the, the reason that a recruiter asks you a behavioral-based interview question is that it's typically a predictor of past behavior predicts future behavior. So I think that they're great from a corporate or a, a company perspective in helping you really weed out talent um, and help you predict uh, bad hires. But from like a job seeker perspective, I love them because they're easy to prepare for. And once you know the method for how to answer behavioral based questions and like the formula and the types of questions to expect, you can you can really get you can prepare. So based on my expertise, I'm familiar with the star method. And I think that's something that you preach as well. Why don't you tell everybody about the star method? Oh, I love it. So I, I shortened it to just SAR, situation, action, result. I, I think T is the task and um, people often forget that, but SAR, situation, action, result. So tell me what happened, what actions did you take and what was the result of those actions? And if you can quantify it, give me a metric or a measure, that's beautiful. I really want to hear the result. Um, and if you can follow that formula, you'll have a strong response. That's incredible. And so what's the preparation that you coach candidates on? Talk to us a little bit about preparation. Yeah. Tactics, tactics that the candidates listening right now could put into practice to be prepared. Sure. I would absolutely prepare 20 different stories. And these are stories about your career where you've exhibited positive behaviors and write them down. I mean, physically write out challenging stories that you've overcome or times that you've demonstrated good leadership. Because part of um, being good at behavioral based interviewing is being able to recall and having written stories will help you recall. And then you can also know that a lot of times behavioral based interview questions have different themes and these can be organization, um, mentorship, how you um, handle difficult clients or customers, that type of thing. So knowing that a lot of times questions can come about in different themes is also really helpful. That's awesome. That's super helpful. Sarah, what is the single, if you had to give one piece of advice to someone in their job search, one golden key piece of advice, what would that be? It would be personalize your message and your approach and be strategic. You said it earlier, people spray and pray on when they're job searching. They just go online and they spend 10 hours just applying for every job that they see and they hope it works out for them. But you've got to be strategic. Think about who your target companies are that you want to work for. Find individuals within those companies that you can network with. If you don't know anyone, send cold messages, but make sure they're targeted. You might want to spend a half hour per email personalizing it and making sure that it really resonates with the reader so they'll be more likely to respond. That's a fantastic point. Instead of taking those 10 hours and just spraying and praying on every job board, be laser focused identify those companies, identify the people that work there and target them with personalized messages specific to an open position so they can yeah. connect the dots. Don't make it just an irrelevant introduction. Now, there are some times when you want to make a general introduction to a company to establish yourself, but if you see that specific job, it certainly helps you. Now, Sarah, what is the best piece of advice that you personally have ever received? Oh, man. I think the best piece of advice I've received is just do it. Sometimes you have to think about if, if, if you really want something badly enough, being okay with failure and just taking a leap of faith and just making a calculated jump into to doing it. And I, I've said that with marriage, I'm happily married and have been married for um, over 10 years, but if you overanalyze it, um, it could be scary. And same with job search or starting a business or starting a family, lots of major you know, life uh, issues. You, you just have to do it. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. You ready for rapid fire? Let's do it. Cover letters. Yes or no? Maybe. Ooh, that wasn't an option. Um, yeah. <laughs> resumes under two pages. I'm talking front or back. Yes or no? More or less? Under two pages? Should we keep it at two pages? I say you need to um, take as much space as you need, but no more. Two pages is typically ideal. All right, perfect. Um, what is one nickname that someone has given you that you absolutely hate? I, I mean, with a name like Sarah, there's so many lame nicknames like Sarah Barra, Sarah, my, my, my maiden name was Darty, which is a long one. Um, so Sarah D, um, 
Sunny D. They're Sunny D. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I love that one. Um, Sarah, what is your superpower? I'm a connector. I, you are too. Yeah. Yep. I I am from a very small town in Georgia, population twenty thousand people. But somehow I know somebody in just about every city <laughs> in the U.S. and like really know them. I love people and love connecting people. And so if you're going somewhere, I've got five friends for you to meet. And um, I say that's my power. What about you? Absolutely. That, that is my superpower. I am, a, I am a power connector. And I say this time and time again, I see opportunities that others do not. And I connect the dots. And whether that be personally or professionally, and if I can make a dime on it, great. But if not, I really don't care as long as I... I see those things and I'm like, it could be something two completely opposite polar ends, but I see something in the middle where these two folks, these two businesses could have that synergy. Um, and I connect it. Sarah, I, and I end my interview questions with this one to everybody. What is your North star? What do you mean by North star? When you are either at a low point, when you were down, when you were looking for inspiration, when you were looking to pull yourself up, or you're even in that great place and you want to show gratitude, and just that one thing, that one person, that one element that draws you in, that is your North Star, your guiding light. I'd say a faith in God um, is definitely a North Star for me. When I am not feeling grounded, <clears throat> I think spending time in the Word or spending time with God or at church is definitely really helpful for me. I love it. That's fantastic, Sarah. Awesome. So closing thoughts here, everybody. The job search isn't easy. In fact, I could say based on personal experience, it is the hardest job that I've ever had multiple times. And it takes work and it takes time and it takes effort and you have to give it your all. And you need to really dig down inside and harness those strengths. Interviewing is hard. Job applications are hard and not everybody's good at it. It takes practice, preparation, persistence, and patience, as well as using tactics that Sarah discussed, like the STAR method. These will put you light years ahead of the competition and make you stand out. But trust me, trust Sarah, it works. And there's amazing coaches and advisors out there like Sarah that could guide you and inspire you to be your best. You can find Sarah on LinkedIn and please visit her website, www.briefcasecoach.com. And I'll have those links below. Sarah, thank you so much again for coming on the podcast. I greatly appreciate it. Hey, thanks for your really thoughtful questions. You're awesome, Adam. Awesome. I appreciate that, folks. This is the type of advice you need to harness your inner tenacity and drive your career forward. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Please take care. Please subscribe. Please click on the links below, and we'll catch you next week for another amazing episode of the podcast. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode jam-packed with more incredible humans. For more info, please visit www.nhptalentgroup.com.